Hello, and welcome to another one of my album reviews. My name is Christian Eschbach, and today we are going to be using CanCon, and the reason why we're going to be using CanCon is we are looking at an album that I never would have discovered without it. This is, because you can't tell by the cool album artwork, no name, no album title on it, it's here on the side. This is Death From Above, 1979, You Are a Woman, I'm a Machine. Okay. I love this bit. First off, I love the artwork, okay? So, um, I want to put the graphic up here, but I'm not going to. Uh, the reason I never put the graphic up there, if you're one of my continuous watchers, is I want everybody to see that I buy albums. I purchase albums. I own albums. I will not review an album I do not have in my possession. I may not own it, but that means I may have borrowed it from a friend. Chances are I own it. Anyways... This album, I own this album because back when we had much music and they played music videos, you know, the constant complaint about everything, right? CanCon had to play a minimum of 10% Canadian material. Now, in the early 2000s, that wasn't hard to do because of how much great Canadian material was coming out and how diverse it was. Death From Above was something completely different than everybody else. It came out as the same time as, you know, Nickelback was exploding, Avril Lavigne had exploded on the scene, uh, Summer 41 was out there, um, there's other ones I know I'm forgetting because there was that whole new punk, new new punk or post-emo or post-grunge or I don't know what the hell term they're using for these days but anyways you know there's a lot of bands out there but these guys these two guys okay now first off if you watch other videos you've also heard me mention how I'm a bassist and I'm a drummer drummer first bassist second that's all there is of this band. It's a drummer and a bassist. Okay, there's a little synth work in there, stuff like that too. Okay, let's let's be clear. But the core of the band is two buddies. Okay, two buddies put a band together. They kicked out these songs using a bass and a drum. Okay, the bass work is top notch bass work. I mean, we're not talking Yeti Lee craziness bass work that you you know. But still. This guy does things that you know. Me as a bassist, I'm an experimental bassist. I like playing around with bass. It's not just about. Yes, bass is about holding down the rhythm, but sometimes you want to get out there and have a little fun with it, you know what I mean? This not only helps hold down the rhythm, but he's having fun with it. Like, what he does with the bass on here is just, it's fantastic. And the drum, the drum work is just, I mean, this band does simplicity, but does simplicity with beautiful textures and nuances. Like, they know how to work their instruments and how to get it to go just right. Uh, so we're looking at uh, Jesse F. Keeler as bass and synths, and then Sebastian uh, Glanier. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be, cause they're, I believe, out of Quebec, so I'm not sure if that's supposed to be Glanier or not, but uh, drums and vocals. So um, the two of them are just mind-blowing, like, First, um, before I even get into the songs, you have to own this album. You you have to. This is a must-have album. Whether you're Canadian or not, if you're anywhere in the world, you have to own this album. This album is an experience. It is. It is totally an experience. Let me get into my experience with this album. Now, the album starts out with Turn It Out. It's a really fast, quick song. Pushes it out there. Gets your heart pumping. Gets the album racing. Boom, you're going. Not the song I would have chose to lead the album off with, but it still is a good choice. Uh, Romantic Rights follows that up. Now, Romantic Rights was the very first song I ever heard from these guys. Very first video I ever saw in Much Music. Videos on TV were almost as important as you know the radio was and these guys were not going to get radio play in windsor ontario it's just not going to happen i get detroit radio and the one windsor radio station we had at the time i don't think it 
ever heard Death from Above on them. I, because they're too heavy for it. But they're not heavy. It's just These guys are crazy awesome good because they defy categorization. As, you know, do the legs hard rock heavy metal. I love these guys, but they're not hard rock heavy metal. I've heard someone call them alternative. I don't think they're alternative. Romantic Rights is one of those songs where it, it is just like the bass for starters. The guy uses pick scraping on his bass strings with maximum effect on this song. Like the way the opening riff, the boom. You know, just comes down with a hard note, the boom, and then the... I mean, just maximum skill level of playing on this, the way he's playing. And replicating it is a bitch, because it's nuanced. It's his specific nuances that are doing this, and it's just the scrapes followed by this hard note of the boom. It just hits it home. And then the song just gets going, and then you get the disco-esque drum beat on the background that reminds me of Steven Adler in you know Guns N' Roses Appetite for Destruction because there was a lot of disco-esque drumming on there I don't care what people want to believe you listen to that album you can hear it but on this song too man you just got that cool disco-esque almost like drumming on it but it's not it's hard like it's just, boom like they just drive that boom part home and like oh beautiful beautiful song uh, now, the next three songs to me kind of are just kind of the fillers of the album. Uh, you got Going Steady, which is okay. It's it's great after Romantic Rights. It just kind of, like, I used to listen to this album a lot while playing video games. Um, this is one of those songs that would be great. It would disappear in the background. I would turn the music off on uh, Grand... I remember Grand Theft Auto 3 specifically. I'd turn the music off on the Grand Theft Auto 3, just have the regular sound on, and I'd use these as my radio stations, you know? Um, and Going Steady and Go Home, Get Down both just blend into the background. The next song after that was actually their second video to come out. I wasn't thrilled with this song when I heard the video... And the song is Blood on Our Hands. Now, I don't know what it is about that video. I still don't particularly care for it. I like the song on the album. I just don't care for the video. I don't... The song in the video, I'm not sure if they used a live track for it or what. I just don't... Something about it sounds odd. doesn't sound right. doesn't work for me at all. I almost kind of lost interest in the band when they released the video for Blood on Our Hands. However, they did something really, really smart, and they followed that up with a much, much better video and a much, much better song right afterwards. The song Black History Month. Interesting story. The song is called Black History Month. The song has nothing to do with Black History Month. It was the lyrics were written. It was a poem that were lyrics that were written during Black History Month, and that's how the title got there. Because this is the type of band that they are. Don't expect you know to hear the the track titles and the songs. It's not going to happen. But Black History Month is just fantastic. Uh, lyrically, it is absolutely beautiful. If you've watched episodes before, you know I don't usually care about lyrics. I love the lyrics in Black History Month. They just, they, they appeal to me and they grab me and I think they're fantastic. Uh, the music is beyond exceptional on this song. Just absolutely breathtaking music. And if you ever watch the video for it, the video will completely confuse the hell out of you because the song's played using a bass. It's not played using the piano the same way they showed in the video. Yes, there's some synth work and stuff like that in there, but totally misleading. Um, fantastic song, though. Absolute beautiful song. I want to say it's my favorite song on the album, but it's not. It's probably tied for my favorite song on the album. I will get to that in a moment, though. Uh, that's followed up by Little Girl. Little Girl is a cute little song. It's got a nice little groove to it. Um, Cold War is the one that follows that up. It's another one where it's uh, it kind of blends in the background. It's not a bad song. It's a good tune, but it blends into the album. It kind of disappears a little bit into the album. The album's title track, You're a Woman, I'm a Machine. Uh, good tune. 
I don't know why they opted to go with this as the title track. Um, probably just the way it went. It's not a bad song. Not my favorite. Good tune, though. Pull Out follows that up. I like Pull Out a little bit better. Uh, now, when you get into this back half of the album, you see a little more of a punk kind of influence, a little more of a brash, in-your-face kind of influence. It's cool. I like it. That's why me as a hard rock, heavy metal fan really gets into the album and enjoys it. But I don't think it would appeal as much to your average listener. Uh, it's more of your good workout music. I will go with that. Now, the album finishes off with the song that's tied for my favorite song on this album. I really cannot decide between Black History Month or sexy results. Both completely different sides of the spectrum. Uh, Black History Month is beautiful and reflective. Sexy results, the title says it all. Um, it's got such a naughty riff to it. Uh, you know, and it's, I love it because it's, the song is really, How do I explain this properly? It's it's almost like it's a predatory kind of song, but not in the way you would think. It's not the cliche male predatory song. It's to me when I listen to it. This is not going to be how everybody's going to take this, but when I listen to this song, the way I hear it is a man enjoying being stalked or being the prey to a predatory female boss, you know, a guy that's getting off on the way that he is being um, sexually harassed at work, a man that is enjoying the har sexual harassment, if you like. Sort of. Not entirely. Um, you could take it the same way, you know, there's... When you listen to the lyrics, it can be interpreted a few different ways. It can be interpreted the way that I like to go with it. Another way you could look at it is someone that's, you know, working their way up the chain. There, there's a few different ways. But it is really a beautiful song, and it's a great way to end it. And it's also almost the longest song on the album. Uh, now, when you look at the actual track time, when you pull it up on a computer or anything like that, there is a little piece at the very end of it. It's not even a real hidden track. It's a hidden blurb, you know. Um, there's this big gap of nothing and then this little blurb. But still, the song clock's in it over four minutes. And over four minutes of fun, fun sexiness that rounds out and finishes this album perfectly. So once again... Death from Above, 1979, You're a Woman, I'm a Machine, and I always have to double-check the title because I always forget. Uh, and, and I forget because I always want to call it something else. Uh, this is by far a fantastic album. Um, I cannot rave enough about this album. It is, it is the reason why I believe in CanCon. I do. I absolutely believe in it because of bands like this, because we would not get exposure to bands like this without it. So I will always support CanCon. I will always push for CanCon. Um, a minimum of 10%. Uh, going up a little higher wouldn't be bad either. The, I mean, there are times where the music coming out isn't necessarily great. But... How's the expression goes? Sometimes you gotta throw a lot of shit at the wall and see what sticks. This came out during a time period where a lot of good Canadian music was sticking, and I do believe that without CanCon, this particular band would have got lost in the shuffle. So, anyways, Death from Above 1979. You're a woman, I'm a machine. Pick it up. And until next time, I love you all. Peace and take care.